Hi everybody, Mark Youngworth here, in search of the truth as always, and today what I'll be addressing is an issue that has become quite popular in the Christian conspiracy community, and this is the idea that there are hidden codes in scripture. Now there are different forms of people looking for codes in scripture, some people use algorithm codes uh, that take say the third letter of every word or you know the such and such letter like the fifth or the eighth letter of every line and then there are uh, other kind of codes that people look for that have to do more with meanings of certain words and that's what we'll be dealing with today there's a teacher out there and his name is Chuck Missler he's popular in Christian conspiracy circles and Mr. Missler claims that there is a hidden code in scripture uh, multiple hidden codes actually the one that we will be addressing today has to do with the names uh, in genealogy in Genesis from Adam to Noah and Mr. Missler claims that the genealogy from Adam to Noah carries a hidden message let's get back to our little genealogy bear with me in Genesis 5 the first one is Adam and that's pretty straightforward Adama means man no problem there um, so his son Seth means appointed in this case chapter 4 the earlier chapter in Genesis Eve explains it Eve, Eve said for God hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel whom came who came slew so uh, so the, 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 mean, the, the name Seth meant, means appointed. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Let's, the next one is Enosh, and that is a verb which means mortal, frail, or miserable from the root Anosh, which is uh, usually used of a wound or grief or something like that. Pretty a tough handle to go through school with. He has a son by the name of Kenan. Not Canaan, as some of your Bibles have it, Kenan, because uh, Balaam, in fact, does a pun on those names in Numbers. But the point is, that word can mean sorrow, dirge, or elegy. That's another tough label to go through school with. You know, hey, sorrow, you're on our team. You know, it, 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 it's a pretty tough name. So when he has a son, he says, enough of this. He named his son a mouthful, but a great name. He called his son Mahalalel. Mahal, which means the blessed or, or, or praised one. And uh, El, of course, the name for God. So Mahalalel, it's a mouthful, but what it means is the blessed God or the praised God. So far, so good. Now his son is named Yared, which is a verb uh, meaning uh, to, to come down. And there's a whole story behind that I'll spare you for this particular discussion. And he has a son by the name of Enoch, which we've mentioned already. But what does the name Enoch mean? It turns out it's an academic term. It, 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 re, it means commencements or, or teaching, if you will. And... Uh, Enoch, of course, as I said before, had, uh, had a son by the name of Methuselah, and of course that was the, his death shall bring, and that was the year when he dies is the year the flood came. We went through that. He has a son by the name of Lamech, and this is a case where the root is still available to us in our English. The, the, the root there, uh, we see it in lament or lamentation, and Lamech is, means despairing. It's a root that implies despairing. And Lamech has a son by the name of Noah. How many of you have heard of Noah? I have about 60%, Graham, that's great. <laughs> okay, I'm kidding, of course. Okay, Noah. So it's, a, uh, it's derived from the Hebrew word nacham, which means to bring relief or comfort. In fact, um, the comfort or rest is what the term implies. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, he, uh, his father tell, uh, he says, he calls his name Noah, saying, the same shall comfort us. The name Noah means comfort or rest. Okay, so you've been with me so far. We have a genealogy here then of ten people. Adam, Seth, Enosh, Kenan, Mahalalel, Yared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah. That's, let's not transliterate it, let's translate it. What do those names mean? Well, Adam means man. Seth means appointed. Enosh means mortal. Kenan means sorrow. Mahalalel means the blessed God. Yared means shall come down, Enoch teaching, Methuselah his death shall bring, Lamech the despairing, and Noah comfort or rest. Man's appointed mortal sorrow. But the blessed God shall come down teaching that his death shall bring. Whose death? God's death. 
Man is appointed mortal sorrow, but the blessed God shall come down teaching that his death shall bring the despairing comfort or rest. Is this true? That is my question. And we are going to examine Mr. Missler's claims and his conclusions. To check the meanings of the Hebrew names, we will be using multiple different sources to ensure accuracy and objectivity. These sources are JewishEncyclopedia.com, the Strong Concordance at BibleHub.com, BehindTheName.com, and AbarimPublications.com. Chuck Missler claims that Adam means men. And as you can see, this part is true. Adam means men. Abarim Publications gives a few different meanings of what Adam could mean, but says that it is probably best translated as living creature. Next we have the name Seth. He claims that Seth means appointed. Let's look at what our sources say. Like with Adam, he is correct. Seth does mean appointed, or set, or put. Moving on, Chuck Missler says that the next name Enosh comes from the word Anash, which is spelled A-N-A-S-H, which means suffering. But this is false. Anash does happen to belong to the same root set that Enosh belongs to. However, Enosh does not come from Anash. It comes from the second root form of the word, which is NSH. And the root NSH is not used as a verb in the Bible, but it is used in cognate languages, and it means to be inclined to, friendly, or social. It yields one derivative, the masculine noun Enosh, meaning man or mankind, and this can be verified by looking at Job 28.13, Psalm 8.4, or Isaiah 24, verse 6. This word is one of a few to mean man, and Enosh seems to indicate man without any special characteristic, hence the name Enosh. The closest we come to suffering is from a slight variation we see from Jones's Dictionary of Old Testament Proper Names, which proposes that it means man, frail, and miserable. Note that it says man, frail, and miserable, not man, frail, and suffering. Lastly, the NOBSE Study Bible name list translates it as mortal. These translations are close enough to man to say that we have nearly complete agreement from all sources on the name Enosh, meaning man. Then we have the name Kenan, which Missler claims is different from Canaan. He claims that Kenan means sorrow, dirge, or elegy. What do our multiple sources say? According to the Jewish Encyclopedia, Mr. Missler is already incorrect, as it reports that Kenan and Canaan are the same name. As well, it says that Canaan was the possessor of great astrological wisdom. BehindTheName.com is in line with this thought and says that Canaan may mean possession. BibleHub.com gives no specific definition for the name. And Jones's Dictionary of Old Testament Proper Names proclaims that the name Kenan is the same as Cain and renders possession. It is safe to say that if there is a specific meaning to the name Kenan, that meaning is possession. Next, Missler claims that the name Mahalalel means the blessed God or the praised God. Jewish Encyclopedia does not return any relevant results. Behind the name gives us a user-submitted definition that claims the name to mean praise of God. And BibleHub agrees that the name means praise of God. Although the meaning suggested by Missler is close to what these sources say, the specific meaning is very different. 
the praised God is speaking of God himself, the divine being, while the term praise of God is an action that a person or an angel would partake in. There's a big difference in meaning between a person or an angel praising God and God himself, the divine being. Now we look at the name Jared. Missler claims that Jared comes from the word Yarad, which means to come down. Again, Jewish Encyclopedia returns no results, but all other sources do confirm this to be true. So that one Chuck Missler does have correct. The next name is Enoch. Missler says Enoch means teaching or commencement. This is false, however. Jewish Encyclopedia returns information on Enoch, but nothing related to the meaning of his name. BibleHub.com does not give a specific meaning for the name either, but BehindTheName.com and AbarimPublications.com both agree that Enoch does mean dedicated. Now we come to the name Methuselah. Chuck Missler claims that this name means his death shall bring. Again, this is incorrect. Jewish Encyclopedia does not return a result. BehindTheName.com says it means man of the dart. Strong's Concordance at BibleHub.com is in agreement with that, man of the dart. And Aberim Publications references multiple sources which have differing opinions. The closest translation to what Missler suggests comes from Jones's Dictionary of Old Testament Proper Names, which translates the name, When he is dead, it shall be sent. The other sources it cites are the NOBSE Study Bible, which translates the name to mean Man of the Javelin, and the BDB Theological Dictionary has it as Man of the Dart, just like BibleHub.com and BehindTheName.com do. Next on the list is the name Lamech. Missler claims this name means despairing. He is wrong again here. JewishEncyclopedia.com says that the name might mean vigorous youth. BehindTheName.com says it might mean to make low. The Strong's Concordance at BibleHub.com gives no specific meaning for the name. And Abarim Publications references Jones's Dictionary of Old Testament Proper Names which says the name means powerful, and also references the NOBSE study Bible name list, which says it means wild man. Lastly, we come to the name Noah. Missler claims that Noah means comfort or rest. JewishEncyclopedia.com agrees with him. BehindTheName.com also agrees with him. The Strong Concordance at BibleHub.com agrees as well. And so does the NLBSE Study Bible and Jones Dictionary of Old Testament Proper Names. So Missler got this last one correct. Now we'll compare the names and meanings that Missler claims they have side by side with the results from the research just conducted. The names and meanings in black are the ones that he got correct. The names and meanings in red on the left correspond to the names and meanings in blue on the right. In red are the names and incorrect meanings alleged by Mr. Missler, and in blue on the right are the names with the correct meanings given. As you can see, Chuck Missler was only correct in four out of the ten meanings of the names. If we are going to be generous and give him a pass on the name Methuselah, he would still only have five out of ten correct. What is most concerning is not the fact that Missler is wrong. What is most concerning is the fact that he is teaching people to look for hidden codes in Scripture, which is not only unbiblical, but can lead to very incorrect and even spiritually dangerous mystical theology. If you've been deceived by Mr. Missler, send him a message and politely let him know that you found out about this error and that he needs to correct this matter publicly. For the sake of his own integrity, and more importantly, for the sake of all the people who have been misled by these false esoteric Bible code teachings. If you would like an even more thorough breakdown of Chuck Missler's mistranslations, there is an article by a textual scholar named Michael Heiser that addresses the issue. Now I will say that Michael Heiser is not my favorite Christian on the planet, but when it comes to textual criticism, he is a scholar who is very knowledgeable. 
He makes some further in-depth arguments that I don't get into in this video, so I will leave a link to that article in the video description section. And if any of you are looking for accurate and thorough Bible teachers, I highly recommend Tim Conway, Vody Bauckham, Charles Spurgeon, R.C. Spruill, John MacArthur, John Piper, Paul Washer, and James White. They are all very knowledgeable and thorough preachers. I would also recommend any preacher you can find at I'llBeHonest.com. That's I-L-L-B-E-H-O-N-E-S-T dot com. And I will put links in the video description to some excellent resources for those of you who desire to find solid teachers. And remember, folks, there are no hidden codes in the Bible. If God wanted us looking for codes in Scripture, he would have told us so. God gave us the Bible in language we can read and understand, so we can know his will and understand who he is, who we are as well, and how we are supposed to live according to his commandments, not so that we could go through it looking for hidden meanings. I pray this information has been helpful and informative and that you've been blessed by it. Until next time, folks, keep trusting in the Lord and stay diligently in search of the truth.